What shocked me most about the polar regions on my first travels was neither the cold nor the remoteness, but a bewildering confrontation with my own lack of understanding. My sense of place was weakened by the distinct feeling that I had entered a world without borders. Galen Roll pulls apart. I've never visited the polar regions myself, but I have taken a journey one toward a better understanding of these distant and fragile places. Before, I imagined vast, isolated expanses of snow and ice. In my mind, the Arctic and Antarctica seemed virtually identical. But as I began to study and explore, I discovered that there was more, much more, than I ever imagined. I realized that despite their superficial similarities, these two regions were, in fact, remarkably different. The Arctic is an ice-covered ocean surrounded by land. Home to polar bears, caribou, and nearly four million people, the Arctic is warming rapidly. Sea ice is declining and permafrost is melting, leaving marine and terrestrial life at risk. In Greenland, glaciers are calving at unprecedented rates, raising concerns about ice sheet stability and sea level rise. Antarctica, land surrounded by ocean, is responding in a different, complex way. Much of the continent, the coldest, driest, highest, and windiest place on Earth, has actually cooled in the past 50 years. Yet parts of Antarctica are warming, these changes spell trouble for the West Antarctic ice sheets and the many species that call the region home. How and why are these changes occurring? What can we learn from geologic history? What might the future hold for the polar regions and for us? Answers, of course, lie in exploration and discovery. Just as Byrd, Shackleton, Henson, and Scott dared to brave the unknown, we too must challenge ourselves to venture beyond confusion and superficial understanding. It is said that a journey begins with a single step. Mine was realizing just how much I had to discover. <laughs>